Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, I thought I'd just do a quick um, introduction to Plan G or Plan uh, G version 3. This is software that uh, that we use for FSX uh, VFR navigation. It's a really really great uh, package, it's free. It's this uh, icon just here, if I drag it around. Uh, I've got an icon of a yellow plane, shortcut to Plan 3G. Um, it's basically software that you run alongside with FSX and it plugs into FSX in real time. So we just open it up the first page here. So um, it gives you the entire world um, mapped over. It's basically like a Google map style uh, map. And it gives you all of the uh, navigation data that you would normally have on a VFR chart. Now this becomes really, really cool when you actually plug it into FSX um, because you can see your own plane here on the map and you can see other uh, AI planes or AI aircraft <coughs> in the, the virtual world as well. Um, and so you can plot uh, routes, you can plot, uh, um, you know, places to go here and there using all of this and, and all of this information uh, is stored in here and it tells you all of the you know the frequencies of, of this and that and the airports and airspaces and oh my goodness there's just so much stuff um, as you can see it's quite cluttered uh, in this area of London here but I'm actually down in Shoreham I'm just going to the first part here of this tutorial I am going to show you uh, how to set up a, uh, just a basic flight in Plan G and then uh, in the second part of this um, just brief intro I'll, I'll show you how to fly it and, and what's going on. So this, this if you've never downloaded this before and you want to download it, um, as soon as you open it after, after installing it's going to look different from what you see right now. There's going to be less buttons up here on the top and there's going to be a button that says uh, um, upload from FSX um, X-Plane or something else. And basically what you do is you click that button and you you select where the, your root directory of FSX is, you click OK, and then basically it will load all of the information from FSX into Plan G. Uh, Plan G. So that basically, all of the navigational information that FSX holds is given to Plan G. So Plan G doesn't come out of the box straight like this with all of these you know, fancy VORs and blue and red lines and stuff. You have to actually go and click up here in the top somewhere. Can't remember exactly what it looks like because uh, it's been a while. You click up there and you click OK, and it will take a, a, a fair while loading. It'll probably take about five to ten minutes of, of loading time. But once it's loaded, it'll never have to reload again. So as soon as you open it up, it'll come up like this. Um, so I'll just get stuck straight in if I use the um, zoom buttons down here in the bottom left. Um, so I'm I'm here at uh, Shoreham. Uh, and what happens here is that the VORs are basically the the most amazing, cool things to do to use in in VFR uh, flight. Um, what they do is they give you a bearing. There's basically a, a radio signal emitter on the ground, and it will emit a, a signal that your plane will pick up. And then once your plane picks it up, you know exactly how far away you are from it. Um, and exactly what direction to fly to get to it. So you can basically plot, it's like connect the dots basically, you can go from one to the other and you can, you know, navigate your way around the country. Um, so the cool thing about this uh, Plan G here is it has such an amazing load of information at your fingertips. Um, I cannot even begin to talk about all of this you know, I can't tell you everything in one go because there's just so much stuff here. I haven't even scratched the surface of this myself yet. But what you do is, uh, um, I've just got Shoreham here. I'm going to zoom in here. You can see the airfield. So here's the airfield. Uh, we've got EGKA, which is Shoreham, and you've got that little um, that that airport icon. It looks like a subway icon, to be honest. If you go to to subways in the UK right click on that icon and you'll see a box pop up here and to start a flight plan I'm going to start flight plan at airport EGKA so you click that and all of a sudden in this flight plan box you have a tab that's been given to you um, so your waypoint where you're beginning is EGKA 
Description, Shoreham, heading, you don't really have to worry about because you're stationary on the ground when you log in. Time, distance, blah, 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 blah. Nothing going on because you actually haven't told the, 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 the thing that you're going to go from one place to another. Right, so what I'm going to do next is just zoom out here. I'm actually going to go down to um, Benbridge. So around every airport, there are always what are called, uh, well, actually, yeah, what are they called? I've forgotten the name. I always forgot the name of those. Uh, they're, they're basically little waypoints. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of them. It's awful. Uh, if you guys can remember what the names of those are, um, you know, shout it out in the comments below. But um, around each airport, you're going to have these these yellow dots. If you see, there's one there. There's also one by Littlehampton. There's one up there by Washington, and there's one by Lewes. And they are when when you you're flying VFR. There's a difference between flying VFR and IFR, like in a big uh, airline. If I just come up to uh, yeah, this is Gatwick, I think yeah. So in Gatwick here, as a, as an airliner, you'll be doing your your your, your, your standard uh, instrument departure, your your SID and your star standard intro, uh, instrument uh, arrival, and you'll be having your your own plotted lines and your your um, ILS lineup, and uh, it'll all be figured out for you and so forth. And the, the, the controller knows what you're doing because he knows what, part, what um, airway you're flying on and all that. So, But when it comes to VFR flying, it's a little bit different in that um, you haven't got an exact route to be flying. You haven't got an exact uh, line on a map that you should be on. Um, it's kind of a bit more, you know, go where you want to in a sense. But whenever you come close to an airfield such as Shoreham, you've got these yellow dots on each corner or, or in a rough square around a rough area around the airport and these three dots are basically um, uh, waypoints where you you come in towards the airfield so if I want to come in towards Shoreham and I'm coming from the uh, southeast from down here from Peach Haven let's say and I'm coming up along the coast and I want to contact Shoreham Tower the way I do it is I say you know um, afternoon Shoreham Tower, so and so here, uh, uh, approaching Shoreham, requesting landing, blah 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 blah, uh, approaching via the Shoreham, uh, the, the Brighton Marina, whatever you call that. Oh, I'm going to forget the name of that. How can I forget the name of that? That's, that's awful. Uh, it's not an NDB because NDBs are those green things. Um, a VRP. Boom, that's it, VRP, uh, visual reference point. So you say to the tower, um, you know, approaching via the Brighton Marina VRP. And he knows immediately that that is where you are and that's the area that you are. So he looks on his on his uh, radar uh, monitor and he can see your your um, score code or whatever um, and you, he can see you in that area. So he can identify you much easier if you tell him, you know, little hints of where you are, and these little three VRPs are, are helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at Shoreham, and I'm going to, to depart Shoreham via Littlehampton VRP. So I'm going to right-click on that, add user waypoint Littlehampton to plan. And right, now what that's given me is a black line from there to there. So I'm starting from here, coming along here, and up here they've given me an extra... Um, slot here with description of Littlehampton. Now they've also given me a heading, that's interesting. So from Shoreham to Littlehampton VRP you fly 262 from here to here and that will take you straight from there to there. Uh, that's how much time it'll take, um, six minutes I think. Uh, um, distance of uh, uh, 9.4 nautical miles. Uh, so yeah, that's all lovely. Now I'm going to scroll over further I'm going to go going to go from Littlehampton to the I'm going to go out of my way actually I'm going to go up to the the VOR of Goodwood so I'm going to go to the Goodwood VOR I'm going to scroll out here so from there to there to there I'm going to go now down to add airport to plan so I'm going to go from Shoreham to Littlehampton to Goodwood and then down to Benbridge now, there's, there are other things here it, uh, amongst this cluttered airspace that will help you uh, know distances. If you're not... Uh, VORs, by the way. VORs, let me show you. 
VORs here. Scroll over it, they have a frequency, 114.75 MHz. Uh, and that tells you the range of the VOR as well. Uh, so you have to be within 195.1 nautical miles to pick up that VOR. But that VOR will also tell you how far you are away from it, which is very helpful because it helps you in tracking uh, yourself. But everything else, basically, you don't you don't know distances. So if I wanted to know how f close I am to Shoreham or close I am to Littlehampton from the airfield, I actually can use a little green thingy that we have down here in the airfield. You've got a little green thing called an NDB. Now an NDB is basically the same thing as a VOR, but an NDB doesn't give you as much info. Oh, no, actually. No. I got that the completely wrong way around. VORs. Oh, I'm confused now. I am, I am confused. This shouldn't be so. I, I am trying to make a tutorial and how can the teacher be confused and expect anyone to actually understand as well? But anyway, <laughs> okay, uh, the NDB, if you right click on here, well, there should be a box coming up on my right hand side showing me information, but it isn't. Um, it gives you uh, kilohertz, uh, so it's 332 three, kilohertz. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all these figures down because I'm going to need them later when I go into FSX. So I'm just going to piece of paper. So uh, the NDB here for Shoreham is 332 um, Shoreham. Uh, and then as we scroll along, go to the VOR for Goodwood. And it's going to say. Uh, Goodwood is 114.75, I believe that was. Let me just check that again. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then scroll out. And finally, down to here. Actually, I'm going to delete that waypoint. Yes. I'm going to reselect the waypoint. I'm going to actually add the waypoint to the NDB instead of the actual airfield itself because the NDB yeah uh oh actually no yeah the NDB has more accurate readings uh 426 for uh for Benbridge okay so I've got those basic things down um, so NDBs will give you a direction, um, but VORs give you a direction and a, a distance. That's what I was saying. So VORs are the best. NDBs are okay, but they, they don't offer quite as much information as VORs. So in terms of, of distances, um, I'm going to log in this uh, the Goodwood uh, VOR in my in my plane as soon as I'm at Shoreham so that will give me a distance from Shoreham to Goodwood and then I'll fly to Littlehampton I won't be flying direct to Goodwood but that will help to give me some sort of a, a, a rough um, distancing because it's kind of in the same direction and then I'm gonna turn and go to um, Goodwood and that'll give me distancing and then as I turn from Goodwood down to to Benbridge the Goodwood VOR I'll still have logged on and that will give me negative uh, as I go away I'll be able to read how far away I'm going from the VOR and therefore know how close I am going to here because these two sections here if I show you Goodwood uh, from Goodwood to Benbridge it's a distance of 16.9 nautical miles right here so all I have to do is I know how I have to be 16.9 be nautical miles away from Goodwood VOR to know that I'm at Benbridge so that's kind of the way it works um, without much further ado um, because the more I start talking the more I start getting wrong uh, I will load up FSX uh, and log in. What you do is you use this connection button. You just click that button and well, well when you have um, FSX loaded and you have your your plane on the tarmac, you know, on the stand ready to go, you click connect here 
Um, I will usually uh, minimize out of FSX. I'll actually, I always run FSX window these days because I can always see this bottom taskbar as well. So I'll always just, as I'm in FSX, I'll come down and I'll click, I'll click this this here and then I'll, I'll be able to uh, alter things or be able to check things and then quickly tab back into FSX. But unfortunately, when uh, Fraps does not let me see the new tab that pops up. So whenever I'm recording in FSX, whenever I tab down and tab out of FSX and go and look in here, it's still recording FSX. It's not recording what you're actually seeing, what I'm seeing on screen every second of the time. So what I'm going to do is when I'm in FSX, I will take screenshots of, of, of Plan 3G and then paste them over the video in FSX so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So without much further ado, I'll just make a break here and I'll uh, meet you back uh, on the tarmac in FSX. Okay folks, here we are back in uh, FSX. I've just uh, loaded up in Shoreham. Uh, you may realize I'm running the new, well, relatively new, Orbex uh, Shoreham package. Very lovely airfield. Um, as you can see, those are all the static aircraft. Uh, usually, in, in whenever I would log into VATSIM, I would uh, uncheck all of the static aircraft so you wouldn't get them mixed up with uh, real aircraft uh, in VATSIM. But um, that is to come later. Um, <coughs> so right now, I have <coughs> uh, I have uh, what do you call it connected. Uh, plan 3G or Plan G to FSX and uh, you've seen those uh, slide shots that I've shown you there. So I am just going to come into FSX and start to load in our information in our uh, radio stack here. So I'm just going to bring up the, the stack. So let me see. No, now I'm at Shoreham which is uh, the NDB for Shoreham as I said earlier on is 332. So I'm just going to correct that. So that, if you look down in the bottom right, you see that yellow arrow has just changed. Now that yellow arrow, that dial, points to this NDB. So that gives us a range to the NDB. Um, we don't actually want this particular NDB because we're going to be flying away from it. We want uh, that particular we well to begin with we want the the first heading which is 262 if you remember from Shoreham to Littlehampton and then we want the Goodwood uh, VOR as well so let me just come back in here so to bring it up the Goodwood VOR is 114.75 I put that in the nav 1 by the way so I'm just going to select 114.75 put that from standby to active and now you'll see this nav chart here will start was just moved so if we go down here to the nav chart uh, or, the, or the nav sorry dial we have uh, two two dotted lines and this this one that's diagonal needs to be pointing ahead so if we scale this round we want the nav and see that arrow? We want the arrow to be pointing up because we're going towards the VOR as opposed to away from the VOR. So as we bring it around again, it's, it comes around and from, so and, and now you want that, that line to go directly straight. And as soon as you do that, you can see it's pointing to um, just a little bit r to the right of west. So in terms of that, where's my, where's my compass? Where did my compass go? There, there was, it's just staring me straight in the face. Right, so in terms of where we want to go, if we want to go str directly to that VOR, we would bring that round and that would be roughly 276-ish, just to the right hand side of west. Um, so if we wanted to go to the VOR now, so directly from here, we would go, uh, we would follow that. But we don't want to do that. We want to go to 262. So I'm just going to select this knob and bring that 
set that to 262. So that's where we want to go. We're pointing in almost completely opposite direction to where we want to go now, so we're going to take off and fly in that direction. So I'm not going to worry about ATC or other planes in the area. I'm going to be a rebel and I'm just going to go straight for it. Um, I'm using the default Cessna 172 here uh, simply to be to just so that you can see uh, how how this works. And, but of course, as soon as the A2A Cessna comes along, I will I will never show you another video in the default Cessna. Hopefully, maybe we'll see. Um, uh, everything that I'll be doing on tutorials for you guys will be using the Cessna that they give you in A2A and of course doing all of that lovely engine management and so forth as well. Just going to whack in some flaps. I'm just going to get get st stuck in straight away. <coughs> and I've recently got the... Uh, oh dear, yeah, it is very bumpy. I've recently got the S-Dock or Easy dock uh, camera set up which adds dynamic shake to the aircraft. So whenever you're flying around or whenever you're going rolling over something bumpy, uh, you get a nice bump. Um, and it gives you a dynamic uh, head and, and, and stuff and shake. So whenever you get hit by a particularly nasty uh, wind shear or, or wind current, you, you, know, you, will, you will kind of jolt around in the cockpit as well. So it's just kind of an extra thing added on to, to what I already have, which is... Um, I already have uh, Track IR5, and so it just complements Track IR5 very nicely. Gives you a lovely feel on the inside. Right. So we've just taken off, very, uh, unaf very, yeah, in a very rebellious manner. Rebellious manner. Don't know what's up with my speech today. And uh, we just are not really bothering about proper procedures or anything. I'm just going to show you the way this works. So I'm going to go straight. I'm going to stick to that that heading bug I set in. I'm going to fly directly for that. And if you look at my radio stack, what we have is a nautical miles meter. Yay! So because I'm tracking the VOR, or actually, no, I shouldn't be tracking. Yes, because I'm tracking the VOR, it tells me how far away I am from the VOR. Uh, and it tells me my, roughly my speed as well, which is helpful. Um, so as soon as I get to the the Goodwood VRP, I will have a little uh, icon pop in the bottom right-hand corner of my FSX, and it will say uh, I'm approaching the VRP of, Good, uh, of, of Little Hampton, and then as soon as I see that, I will turn to my nude heading for for the VOR of Goodwood. And as you can see, because I'm not heading directly to that VOR in Goodwood, the line that I've got that I set central is starting to waver to the right, which means that I need to be flying, you know, more to the right than I am right now. So that's the way it will work. Um, I need to just stay on course here. I love FSX. Alright, that should be fine. 2,000 2, feet should be fine. And I'll just trim for about... Well, I'll trim for full full throttle. Right, so if I was to uh, pause this right now, go into my Plan G, and I will take a screenshot, and then I will show that to you later. Uh, that'll be cool. So as soon as I come along to that uh, VRP, the visual reference point, um, there should be a little um, sound that beeps as well in FSX. So I hope my microphone is, is loud enough. Remember last time I did the, that A2A Spitfire video and it, it really wasn't terribly loud over the sound of the engine. So um, let me actually just uh, try and adjust some sounds here for a minute folks, so just pause for a second. Uh, I just dulled down all the sounds there. So let me just uh, 
trim for level flight here. And uh, yeah, the other thing is is that plan plan G will also tell you the speed of your crosswind and the direction of your co crosswind. So if I just tab over to plan 3G, I've got uh, actually no no wind. It's coming from 002 the wind, but it's zero knots, so it's actually not much of a crosswind at all. So let me just always stay on target there. Let me just look. Yep. I'm I'm on course for for Littlehampton VRP. So I will uh, just make a quick break and I'll come back to you when I get closer to Littlehampton. So I'm getting closer to Littlehampton now. Um and if you just have a look at plan 3G, the uh river that uh is just there is this river here. You can see that river there. The river that's emptying into the sea just ahead of us. That's the river on the map. So VFR flying is 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 like that because it is actually you're looking at your map and then you're looking out the window and you're marrying those two points up. I need to be a bit further over to the left here. You bring those two points together and it basically will show you where you need to be and where you are. So it's very, very helpful tool plan 3G because you basically can tab over. You can look at exactly where you are. You can look at the 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 terrain on on the the map there in, in Plan 3G, and then you can come over back into FSX, and then you can look out the window and you can see ah yeah that's that's where that is. Okay, that's where I need to be. So VFR flight is a bit like that. So we should be should be getting that prompt at some point. Maybe I was far away. Okay, I was far away enough that that we didn't get that. Okay. So I'm just going to re readjust. Readjust my dial here to get a, a new heading on almost yeah, new heading of almost 33300 three which is where we're pointing right about now. So now I'm going directly to the VOR in Goodwood. I passed. I'd actually just accidentally overshot. I overshot the uh, Littlehampton VRP. I, w I was on the. I was left of it. It's a little bit too left. But uh, as you can see, we're now going towards the VOR. We're now tracking the VOR. And if you look out the window, you can actually have. You have a visual, a visual sight in visual sight of the actual Goodwood uh, airfield which is where the VOR is. So in a sense, yes, we can follow the, our instruments, but we can also just look out the window and do it manually as well, which is which is loads of fun. So we know we're about, uh, as we can see down in our stack there, measuring distance of almost 6 nautical miles at 110 knots. So in a minute we will cross over the Goodwood VOR and then we'll turn left down to Benbridge. And just we'll just get uh, the Benbridge uh, NDB uh, ready in our radio stack so that we can uh, have a smooth transi transition from the Goodwood VOR to the NDB. Um, let me see. The NDB for Benbridge, if you saw earlier on, earlier on was 426. So 426. And as soon as I turn that to 6, or, yep, oh, you'll see the, the yellow arrow take up a second and it will change. And that is the heading for Goodwood. Or oh, Benbridge, sorry. So we're coming up on four nautical miles to the airfield now, if you have a look. You can see the airfield there. Let me just show you uh, uh, a screenshot from th Plan 3G now. And of course on top of all of this base navigation there would be ATC. Um, and ATC would be vectoring you to different places as well. Um, which gets more fun. And then of course on top of the ATC when you have the A2A Cessna, hopefully you have lots of lovely engine management to look after as well. So I'm just doing, I'm just like flying around aimlessly using the the basest of navigational aids. But uh, hopefully when it comes out I can get stuck in. I can stop being lazy and, and doing things 
in a lazy way and uh, you know start flying proper proper VFR stuff online in Batsim. But I thought I'd just put out these these few videos um, kind of as a taster of of what I wanted to do in in the future. Um, well, of what I wanted to learn as well, since I I you know. I'm pretty much a learner in this as well as you guys. If any of you are watching this thinking, oh, this guy knows re exactly what he's talking about. Uh, he's so knowledgeable. La da 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 da. This is so good. It's like, well, yes, but at the same time, <laughs> I probably only learnt what I'm teaching you maybe a week before I showed it to you. So I am learning. This is a learning process for me as well. So um, I'm just uh, learning this stuff and then passing it on. So here we are, and as you can see the tower view of uh, of Goodwood, you can see we're, we're coming quite close to the airfield now. So if we go back, we can see uh, down in the in the bar, yep, then there's our um, our little ping noise for we're approaching Goodwood. We are 0.9 nautical miles away from, from the VOR now, 0.8. So we're literally flying straight over the, the airfield, straight over the VOR, and of course if we were doing this in, in Vatsim, and if there was a tower controller at, at Goodwood, he would be saying, you know, uh, he'd be giving us clearance to fly overfly the airfield and all that kind of thing. So we have now overflown the airfield, I believe. Let's do ourselves a rate three turn to get ourselves onto. You just look down uh, to the left. You can see the yellow arrow. We have to be pointing where that yellow arrow wants us. Right, roughly about there, just slightly left. Right, so now we're on the new heading. Uh, now the nautical miles counter will start counting up. As you can see, 1 nautical mile, 1.2, yeah, 1.2 nautical miles there. And that will count all the way up to, what was it, 16 point, uh, let me see, 16.9 nautical miles. Yep, if I just show you plan 3G here you will see that I overshot the uh, overshot Goodwood VOR there slightly so I'm going to have to bring that back I'll, and I'll overlay all these screenshots as well on, on the feed afterwards in, in, in editing but uh, yeah so we have to wait until that counter gets to 16.9 nautical miles and we'll know we'll, like, we're exactly over the NDB of or yeah the NDB of, of uh, Goodwood and of course the airfield as well. So I'm just going to make another break in the uh, the video here and I'll meet you back in a second. Okay here we are so as you can see right out the front window there there is uh, Goodwood Airfield right there and we are 14.2 nautical miles away from the Goodwood VOR directly behind us uh, so at this point we of course would already be talking to ATC uh, vectoring for uh, an approach or a circuit. I'm just going to have a, uh, a, a pause here and go into Plan 3G so we can have a look. Okay, so we want to go into a circuit. I'm just going to check where the wind is. Wind is 002 at 0 knots. So there's no wind. So technically we could we could take any... Yep, there's the ping for, or for a 500 feet to uh, target altitude or the target of, of Goodwood. I will uh, choose my, let me see, I'll set, uh, select a heading of uh, 120. Okay. Make my first turn. Uh, now I would be going. I would be coming onto the downwind leg. Getting ready to go onto the base leg. So uh, you'd be talking. You'd know, be saying, uh, you know, Goodwood Tower or Bembridge Tower. Um, now on downwind leg. Blah blah blah. He would say, uh, All right, report report on final. You are number one. Meaning that you're the you know the first to you're the first person is the next person that's going to land and so forth, but uh, ATC will come later because I'm not actually very well versed in ATC. Um, I'd like to be. I'm looking forward to be. 
Um, but that is going to come in a minute. Come later. Okay, so I'm just putting in some speed. Right, now I'm going to make my turn. Now I want to be 90 degrees to the f to the airfield, which is, if you look at my at my navigation, yeah, boom, there we go. Right now I'm coming on turning final, so I'd say uh, Goodwood Towers is uh, Golf uh, Golf Kilo India Romeo Kilo turning finals for runway two one zero, and uh, and so that would be kind of the way it would work. That's not a terribly straight final, but but hey. As I come down, there we go. Let's see if I can get right on that center line. <laughs> no, not really, but but anyway. So that is that is the very basics of how to navigate uh, using VFR navigation from one place to another and using the program that I'm going to be using in the tutorials series to come on the A2A uh, Cessna 172. I hope you've kind of enjoyed uh, watching how this works and getting an idea of how interesting Plan G really is. It is incredibly helpful. The more you use it, the more you realize how how fun it is to actually uh, navigate using VFR navigation across a country that's as crowded as England. Um, if you looked at the beginning of the tutorial you saw uh, London is just chock-a-block full of, uh, of uh, transition levels and, and VORs and airfields and uh, air spaces that you can't fly into and so if it was real life you would just be chat chattering to ATC all of the time talking about uh, you know different different airspaces you can transition and all that kind of thing but uh, just show off show off the the easy dock as well Let's see you might get some camera no no doesn't want to play for us today anyway that was uh, just a short kind of video of what's going on and what is hopefully going to be happening in the future hope you enjoyed it um, yeah I'll talk to you later